Are you an American that has to do 1040 tax returns to report their foreign real estate property investments? If that's the case, you need to know about depreciation and how those foreign assets are depreciated on your 1040 tax return. It's complex, but it's explained in this video. Go check it out. Hi everyone, my name is Simon Mishevich from Optimize Accountants and in this video, we're going to be talking about foreigners that own real estate in their country. And in this example, we'll say the United Kingdom, but you could be anywhere, Spain, Germany, Hong Kong, doesn't matter. And you will, as an American, still have to report that on your 1040 tax return. So what I've done here is I've given you the reference I'm going to be using for this video, but I'm going to go into depths about the detail. So you can go on to IRS and it's publication 527, which was updated in 2020 for residential property. And in there we talk about depreciation. So without further ado, let's go into the necessary details. And the first thing it will say is here, the basic form for reporting residential property income and expenses is Schedule E on your 1040 tax return. So if you're foreign and you're an American, sorry, if you're an American living in a foreign country, owning foreign property, you still have to report your property income on your 1040 tax return. Um, there is an exception to reporting it on that schedule. Generally, Schedule C is used when you provide substantial services in conjunction with the property or the rental is part of a trade or business real estate dealer. This is whereby you are pretty much a real estate full-time property investor, property developer, and you're involved in it substantially. There are rules which I think you need to speak to your accountant, your CPA, EA, whoever you're using for your 1040s to understand what this really means. In a sense, what you can do is that you can um, offset any losses against other types of income. So if you have losses as a real estate property investor who is full time, then you might well be able to put it on your Schedule C, which is corporation or business, and then get that loss relief against all forms of income on your 1040 tax return. So great results if you can get that, but you do need to get some advice. Uh, otherwise, you are going to be subject to this, which is passive activity limits. Generally, rental real estate activities are considered passive activities and losses aren't deductible unless you have income from other passive activities to offset them. Bit of a mouthful from RS, but basically it means that if you are employed or you have a main business that is not real estate property, then you cannot be considered a uh, substantially involvement in that property business and therefore losses will just be accrued over time. You can use those losses fortuitously against future profits but mainly you're going to be a passive investor. Again it's a real big difference if you're full-time in property or you are a passive investor on your 1040 tax return and we could talk about that in another video. What I do want to talk about is if you are a, an American living in a foreign country and you have property, you do of course need to convert your pounds in this case into dollars. It could be in euros, it could be Hong Kong dollars, but you always need to do a conversion for your tax 1040 tax return. That seems obvious, but I just want to bring that to your attention. Uh, depreciation is an expense. It is a mechanism for recovery of your cost in an income producing property and must be taken over the life of your assets. I'm going to go into a bit more detail about what that really means and how the, you can work that through. Um, but it continues to say, you can begin to depreciate rental property when it's available to for rent. Okay, so you buy a real estate property and in the US you get this depreciation charge which helps you to reduce your US taxable income, which is brilliant in the US in the UK, you do not get that depreciation charge. If you're in another country, of course, watching this video, you might have to look at your own tax legislation laws and see if depreciation is also allowed in your country to help your foreign taxable profits. 
Um, so this is just another example here into the RS definition of when depreciation kicks in. You move your, from your home in July, during August, September, you made several repairs to the house. On October 1st, you listed the property for rent with real estate company, which rented on the 1st of December. The, the property is considered placed in service October 1st, in which you listed the property for rental. So as soon as you know that you're going to be using that asset for rental, you can start depreciating it at that point. Now, you might have bought the property and you are ready to use it straight away for rental. In that case, you would use that date, the purchase price of the property for that. Um, and I'll, my little tip there, depreciation is taken when bought into use. So it's really about when you place your, uh, your asset into use. The big thing here is if you're in the UK, you really don't need to think about this, but it can be a real troublesome for your 1040 tax return. So you need now another schedule for your UK property, which includes a balance sheet. Why? Because depreciation is only charged on the building itself and not the land. Go figure, because in the UK, you don't ever think about, well, what's the cost of a building versus the land? And in another country like Spain, Hong Kong, anywhere in Europe for that matter, if you're an American buying property, do you ever split out the building from the land? Probably not, but you do really need to do so for your US tax return. So that this is really important, guys, when you're watching out for this part. The big thing about depreciation is if it's foreign, you have to use this ADS, which is the Alternative Depreciation System, which basically means that residential property will be depreciated over 30 years. So you would take your 300,000 and you would divide that by the obviously 30 to get your full year. But of course, you need to again divide that by the number of years that you've acquired the property. So in this case, you wouldn't be able to take 12 months worth of depreciation if you only bought and put into use a real estate property in your foreign country in October. You'd only take two twelfths of that amount. So you have to be a bit careful with that. Um, one big thing I want to bring to your attention is that the depreciation may you may get even more of a depreciation uh, tax charge against your 1040 taxes. Why? Well, mainly because you've got things inside the property that will be depreciated quicker. So, for instance, if you've got stoves and refrigerators, so white goods, we might call them in the UK. I don't know what you call them in your country, but again, similar kind of things here. Mechanics that you can potentially move or may be integrated it was, will be depreciated over nine years, not 30 years. So you're accelerating that depreciation. Carpets, they are also uh, depreciated over nine years. Furniture used in rental. So if you're doing, um, it's called Airbnb properties or furnished holiday lets, vacation homes. There's so many categories, isn't there? Uh, what do you call them, by the way, for, into the short stay properties? What do you call them in your country? Put that in a comments box. I'd be really interested to see what you call them. Um, but if you have got this Airbnb uh, arrangement going on, then the, you may put furniture in the property and that furniture might be depreciated over nine years. There is a big thing which I've not included in this is the fact that if you have uh, an acquired an asset and you replace it with something, actually that asset that maybe have been used for four years, you might now be able to fully write off that depreciating asset against your profits. But you can well imagine now there's a huge amount of work that's required for you to understand all of this and then to report it to the IRS in terms of the depreciation. But there's a huge opportunity and a, a lot of mistakes being made because people just do not depreciate their assets correctly in the eyes of the IRS. Uh, there's some other assets here, office furniture equipment, such as desks and files. Uh, you've got 10 years, any property that doesn't have a class of life and that hasn't been designed uh, designated by law as being used in any other class is going to be depreciated under 12 years. So hopefully we've covered off now how depreciation is worked and how you really calculate it. Um, there is some more information on that, in, in fact, for 
fences, you've got 20 years. So if you've got a garden and you've got separating, dividing borders with fences, then they are depreciated over 20 years, not 30. Again, a lot of work. Is it really necessary? Well, yes, according to the IRS, because there are penalties for not filing correctly. Uh, but your CPA, your EA, your accountant might charge you for all this extra work. Okay, so let's look at an example now. This is whereby you have a property, foreign property, and you need to report it on your 1040 tax return to the IRS. What do you need to consider? Well, let's imagine you've got a UK property in this example. Again, you may well have properties in Europe, whether that's in France, in Portugal, in Spain, Germany, uh, the list goes on, right? Um, I'm just going from left to right, if you've noticed that. Um, so again, you need to think about euros converted to dollars in this example. If you're in Asia, you may have property in Hong Kong, uh, in Singapore, Thailand, doesn't matter, or you or Australia for that matter. You will have to go through this example to report as an American owning foreign real estate property to the IRS on your 1040 tax return. This example will help you with this depreciation um, malarkey. So you've got 10,000 pounds worth of rental income. Again, it might be euros, Hong Kong dollars, etc. Uh, leaves you with 4,000 pounds profit. Assuming you're a high rate taxpayer in, um, in the UK, you're paying 4%. Again, what is the tax charge in your country versus the UK? Obviously you'd be using your rate. So now what we need to do is convert your financials, whichever country you're in. So of course we're looking at the UK, but you might be in euros, you might be converting from Hong Kong dollars, whatever it might be, Thai bahts, etc. But in this example, we are converting the 4,000 pounds worth of profit using 1.25. Doesn't matter what the, uh, the formula I'm using here, you have to go and get the correct conversion rate from the IRS website. So you're converting £4,000 worth of profit into $5,000. You now have this depreciation. So don't forget that you, if you have a building, you, you only depreciate that, not the land that the building sits on. Uh, you may accelerate depreciation for items in there, fixtures, first fittings, white goods, etc., as we discussed earlier. But let's imagine you've got this uh, 10,000 depreciation charge. You'll notice that I've said it's a waste. Why is it a waste? Well, because it creates a 5,000 uh, loss. Nothing you can do with that. Uh, you have a tax due of $0, plus you've got this $2,000 equivalent of the UK tax that we've already paid. So straight away, um, this is showing you that it is, it is a total waste of time. However, the results reverse because if you convert this example to Hong Kong property, then the tax system is very low. So depreciation for Hong Kong at 17%, let's say for an example, you may well have to pay a tax charge to the US if you did not have this depreciation charge. So depreciation for low tax countries works very well for Americans owning foreign properties. It doesn't work so well, or it's a total waste of time really, if you are in a high rate tax rate country such as the United Kingdom. Hopefully that video was useful for you, but please do not stop there. There are plenty of videos that I know that will help you build your wealth whilst reducing your tax liability. And in this video, well, this is the one I think you should be watching right now.